this is what we have, this is what we know. How you live with bombs that fall on your house. They will have to make the vessel operate as a small community. And they will have to do it together. We are one family. We are one hand. I wish that kids could just take a ball and go outside to play without be afraid like the kids here did today. The Fairhaven Project presents One Sailing Towards a Horizon of Hope. This program was conceived to bring Arab or Palestinian and Israeli students together to give them an opportunity for a dialogue. It's an opportunity for them to be kids and get to know each other. And hopefully through that, establish ties and relationships. The Fairhaven Project provides a ship as a tool for the individuals to forget who they are and work collectively for a common goal. They will have to make the vessel operate as a small community. They will have to cook, they will have to clean the vessel, and they will have to do it together, regardless of their cultural differences. In an environment that they have to perform a task together, a role together, uh, rely on each other for their safety and security, Eric DeWicke, a former Coast Guardsman and Merchant Mariner and founder of the Northeast Maritime Institute in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. I've traveled all around the world. I've been to 78 countries. Personally, I don't believe there are good guys and bad guys. I believe in my heart people are people. So the hope and goal is to really find the future leadership of both sides, bring them together and to participate as one. We can enable them to maintain and manage dialogue. We'll know we have succeeded. Fair Haven, in nautical terms, is safe harbor. And I want these young men and women to come to Fair Haven, Massachusetts, and feel safe to learn about each other. Okay. Well, here, we'll, we'll come to the backyard. Is Angela around? Yes. Great. So, uh, have a seat, make yourselves comfortable. And um, we're gonna let them call home, Greg. And uh, it, it, you're very sorry that you have go army and fight against maybe their families or maybe their friends. But it's still big respect for me to go to the army. You grow up with the know that one day you will be a soldier. And, and you wait for it. I really want to go to the army. I believe that my children will go to army like my father and my grandfathers did. Why, why people that only go to their workplace to bring money home, to feed their children, have to die because one day someone decided to bomb them. You don't, our, we don't believe anymore in our government that really can bring peace. And if you will ask me today, do you believe that you can bring the peace, I will say no. Everyone wants to, uh, to live uh, as he is in uh, in his country, I'm Palestinian. I should I should live Palestinian life, not I should live uh, how the Israelis want. If I go to my school or uh, or somewhere with my family, I should pass the checkpoint. That's my country. That's my uh, my my area. So why I can't pass easily? Why are these 
Oh, they're all um, through the lunch boxes and water bottles and uh, hampers. Yeah, I live between Ramallah and Jerusalem, spending most of it on the checkpoint, going from school to my uh, house in Jerusalem. Between the Israelis and Palestinians, there's still a little bit of tension, and um, there's nothing to really talk about. Still, maybe after a while, we can draw some common things and start to talk more. I know that it's intense to talk about it, but uh, I talked to. I have a lot of uh, Bedouin and Arab friends. Talked about the situation in Israel, and it was pretty intense, and there was a lot of shouting. I'm from Jerusalem, from Palestine, Jerusalem. I live in the old city and I was born there. I always, uh, I'm always at the old city. I don't go further than the old city. Because uh, the, my school is there, my, my work with my brother and my home, it's all uh, inside. <laughs> I live for already two years near the road in Kibbutz, uh, which is uh, two kilometers from Gaza. We have those times that it's normal, it's, like, it's life like, like it should be. But most of the time it's just like uh, we can study like normal students, we can live like normal people. We're getting those bombs all, all the time. For example, my, my school and my kibbutz is all bombed. It's awful. The old city, we have a lot of problem with the policemen. They always checking us out. Everywhere checkpoints. Checkpoints. Even if you want to go to our, our IDs, they let us uh, take off our clothes sometimes. Really? Yes. How, do you, how would you feel? I know, I, I'm also... No, I'm not defending the No, no, I also I feel that it's stupid to do it in the middle of the street or something, but we can't do something else uh, against it because you know that the bomb, that you can take bomb in your back, backpack, in, on your body, or in but the... But why the are no, checking I, Arabs, not anyone else? That's your okay. problem. I think it, he's got a point, yeah. but... Well, we think it's... A a point of safety, but uh, also it's a way of pushing Palestine. It's a way um, defending their country also, and pushing Palestinians out of there. I mean, you have the the jihad and all those. Uh, they're wrong. They do believe that they should kill and hurt others. Here again, there are crazy people in two sides. I can show you. People that speak with me and say, oh, all these Arabs, you have to drop them to the sea. And then sure that there are crazy people on the other side that say, we have to kill them all and to let them run away to where they come from at 48, before 48. And I agree that you have to take the land and make two parts. But you have to think about this and speak about this. And the very first project they're going to be working on is they're going to develop a burgee. A uh, burgee is a flag that is hoisted to the top of the mast of a sailing vessel to identify the owner of the vessel. The burgee design uh, created an environment where we have to work together and we have to consider each other as individuals and not the opposing team. For the ship, we're gonna like background for uh, for this. 
this is for the fists. The and the girls do the pieces. At the top of the every part of the flag, we will do we have to integrate ideas and thoughts and philosophies in a, in a piece of art. Every uh, one uh, draw uh, the idea on, uh, on his own paper uh, and then everyone explained uh, the idea, his own idea. So, and then we, uh, we mixed all the ideas uh, together and the idea was to be one, to work together and, uh, and, uh, and peace. One, two, or nine. What? <laughs> uh, I guess so. Which one? Do you like A or, or C? A. A is much more clear. It's much the more earth and A beautiful. is better than the earth and C. No, you can't. Each day, something has happened when I knew that what we had set out to do was working where the kids were looking at each other as human beings. They weren't looking at each other as Israelis and Palestinians. In the museum, we had a mission to find one sentence that uh, J John F. Kennedy said and say why we picked up this sentence. So it makes me really look about what's going on around me. I'm not uh, word by word, but it, was, it said something about that people may die and countries may rise and fall, but idea is uh, always still al stay alive, something about this. And it makes me think about, I don't know if you know him, Yitzhak Rabin, it was a great uh, head of uh, government in Israel and he was very very close to bring a peace between us to the Palestine. He was the really one that was close to do it. He made a peace with Jordan and he was assassinated too. Thank you for meeting us. You bet. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm Yateli. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. At another stop in their journey, Patrick Kennedy agrees to meet with these children. If there's ever been a family that has met adversity, it's the Kennedy family. The best uh, defense, in my view, is giving people a future. Do you think there's gonna be an opportunity in your lifetimes for peace to be? Maybe there will be peace at the future. Maybe. We're gonna have peace on two sides. Yeah. It's very interesting. You know, they never thought that it could happen in Northern Ireland, that peace could start to take place there. Everybody's got to be part of the political process. Um, so uh, having you all as future leaders really get involved in the political process. Hey. Rowing is an age-old tradition to develop crews on ships. The first step to becoming a crew is, is usually analyzed if the crew can row a vessel together. We get them out there, we get them pulling together, there's gonna to be mistakes. Now you have to listen, you have to look, you have to observe, you have to pay attention, and you forget who you are. What I witnessed today is a group of individuals becoming one. Now they're operating one vessel. Steady course, steady speed, they're moving towards one goal. Friends, guys, look at this one again. Hold it, put your hand through, grab it, drop that right there, let go, let go, let go, let go. Okay, okay. Counterclockwise right twist. Hand. Up. As yes. they're learning the ropes, you can tell that there, were, there was no resistance. These kids came in and, and, and ran with it. And try to go the, about the length of your arm. Greg likes the really long coil, guys. They look around, they see rope after rope after rope after rope, over 80 of them. All of a sudden, they've got to learn these within a day. 
They've got to learn how to haul together. They've got to learn how to release together. They've got to learn how to take orders together. So, let's put you two on the halyard. You two. So reach high. Okay, don't pull yet, don't pull yet. <laughs> All right, here's where the whole kind of repeat command thing comes in. So you guys have to know what line you're on. Okay, so you guys are on the four stasel halyard. And you would yell, Holloway halyard. <laughs> Just, okay. Ha! Okay, go ahead. So, Holloway Halyard. Holloway Halyard. Okay. <laughs> and go ahead, pull, 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 pull. They are no longer individuals. They are teammates. Okay. okay. And it's, yeah, it's going to be dead easy. Um, and we'll need somebody on the sheet as well. On the boat. The f one of the first things that people can see is the flag from far away. So it's, it's supposed to be, it's beautiful, but uh, I think that it's supposed to be the first impression. As you can see, we met everybody's objectives. The meaning of the flag is, of our flag is peace. You guys should be absolutely proud of yourselves for pulling this off. It's also included inside the, the map of the world. So it means that we all like supposed to live together and to be together. And the white behind uh, and the green olive leaves are the, also the peace. Conflict resolution occurred as a result of give and take. I want this piece, I want that piece, I want this representative color in this flag, in this burgee. So each of you put a hand on the line and start hoisting as one. Me. I brought one, I got one, and... <laughs> I did, I'm just trying the first. Personality started to emerge. It was fascinating to sit back and watch because we were surprised by some personalities emerging. I see it, thank you. Here we are, three young adults from Palestine, three young adults from Israel, merging them together, melding them together to live on a ship. This is the Fairhaven project. Dinner tonight will be omelets. Great. Jelly. Maybe we'll Jelly. make omelets for lunch. Not, not, why why omelets? Why, why omelets? Well, for dinner, we have the eggs. Awesome. Do you want to do something awesome. different with the eggs? You got to oh, look okay, out. Okay, okay, okay. Osborne, help us. Okay. Osborne, help us. Okay, just, okay, we do omelets. So, Dana and Adi, you guys have the lunch today. The 
the first day we get underway was the reward of two and a half weeks of working on discussions, working towards common goals, learning how to work as one. The reward is here, finally. If you let me get up there, I do the dinner tomorrow. You do the dinner tomorrow? Don't you have to do the dinner tomorrow Here we are in Nantucket, readying ourselves to go to the beach, Surfside Beach. These kids really, truly are enabled to just be kids. We're done at the beach. We basically now head to the park. It's time to strike a chord, start to talk about their conditions back at home. I want to know what it's like for Gabby to leave his house and try to go into Bethlehem. I want to see what it's like for him when he's stopped in the streets and he's strip searched and people are laughing at him as he's naked. I want to know what that feels like. Imagine being in that situation. I want to know what it's like for you to have to worry about some man-made rocket that's going to fly over and hit my house. That's horrible. Do you feel that Americans really understand what's going on between the Israelis and the Palestinians? First of all, I think that all over the world people know about what happened in Israel. Uh, no one can know from the outside what's going on unless he lives no, I'm talking the way about of only our the, lives. I'm talking about only that people around the world know about the conflict. Not Just knowing action. that there is a conflict? Yeah. It, it, yeah, but... <laughs> But they know that they can't in Israel know the, the real is thing there. unless they, they live in come Japan. and live I know. the way everyone lives. And see in their eyes what's going on. I can tell you that I had a few conversations with Gabby just to get to know what, what is he going through. Yeah, the last night. Because, and I'm sure he, they, they didn't know what, what we're going through in our day life. And, I mean, knowing that there is a conflict is not enough. Yeah. They're knowing that there is something bad in Israel. And but it sounds to me like what you're saying is that they don't understand what it's like at the, on the human level, at the individual level. So you have horror on both sides. And how do you remove the horror? Trying to make peace. Try to make peace, but you'll only make peace if you truly, truly understand each other. Tell me uh, what you liked best about this program. What, um, and, it, and it can be uh, any, anything. You're far from home, you're far from the problems. It's, it's have the effect. But the real difference 
is because we hear three Israeli and three Palestinians. Not like a group of Israelis and group of Palestinians. I mean, this is the reason why we get the friendships and became together. Because it was like uh, maybe 15 Israelis, 15 Palestinians. We was there like two groups that really maybe get some fighting each way each other. It was good that I can hear the other side without uh, any fear or something. If you had an opportunity to create this program based on what you've experienced, what would you add or how would you change it? We need uh, more free time to sit together, to, to know e about each other more and uh, to stay uh, more days. I think uh, that's, that's the ch change, that everything is good. This program, if it was longer, it would be like better, I think. More time spent here, I think better. That's good. This program doesn't need a lot of change. Uh, the plan is good, uh, but uh, I think if we get more free to let we six be together. It's like every day that we are here, we became more group, more like one, as you say it. Every day here, the situation become better and better. Everybody just bring his part and it was... Uh, I said, Tal, look at me. Yeah, Tal did the most. <laughs> And every day our team became more one team. Works like one man. Not over yet? Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Next <Sure>. day. <laughs> Three, two, one. Looks like in a restaurant. Wait, yeah. salad. Wow. Chicken. We can open a restaurant. Burning grass. <laughs> we'll call it Fritha. <laughs> Debbie will be the cook. The I'll chef. be the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, a few minutes ago, this water bottle tried to kill me. Yeah. We get me. back to the vessel. Captain states that uh, we're going to have, to have to motor back because the wind isn't right. I'm a little bit upset, quite frankly, because I brought these kids over to sail. Okay. I no, it's together. Ears. It's not. They're not together. Ah. They're one to the top. So do only the left one. I wanted them to have the sailing experience, not an experience where they have to listen to an engine pushing this vessel. As I'm thinking this, the wind shifts. The wind shifts enough to take us out of Nantucket Harbor at sunset. Yeah. No. Yep. Oh, Get your shoes on. Wind <laughs> <laughs> Gotta sail with the wind. What? Do you have like. We're not on watch. <laughs> All hands on deck. You are now. Wait, do we have the lights on? Yeah. Jelly, we sign. Jelly. Get better. Or the starboard. That's on. Starboard. What happens is we experience the most wonderful night sail under the stars, under the moonlit sky. It's an exercise that requires stamina, that requires the ability to pay attention, the ability to focus, more importantly, the ability to trust. One state to the other, one culture to the other, one religion to the other. Now we're truly operating as one.
Some night we had the night sailing and we had to steer in the middle of the night. And you can't steer all the night, so you have to do teamwork and everyone do his part of the work. And we, when we open the sailing, we have to work together because you can't do it all alone. We are sharing in one idea, we are working together as one. So we are six, but we are at the same time we are one. Especially when raising and lowering the sails, we had to work together to make the ship work, ship move. This trip was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, great things that we done together. And I think that one big thing that I will take is the work together. Everything you do, you need to be with someone and you don't have a minute for yourself. But you, I got used to it and you find how to, to share it. Israelis and Palestinians can be together. It's not a problem. The town of Fairhaven put together what we call the peace concert. The State Department and Northeast Maritime Institute worked on a project to bring three Israeli students and three Palestinian students to the community uh, to work together and, and share some time together. And we couldn't find a more exemplary town to bring students uh, in a, from a conflicted area. They actually designed a peace flag called a burgee. So it's very exciting and each one of them will receive this. And uh, we will also hang a very large one at the Northeast Maritime Institute as well. So great job. First tune up is a little prayer for peace. You have to work for your country and, and try to improve it and try and it also uh, implies to to the hum, to the human being himself because you have to work to improve yourself. How we work together and uh, how we we were in uh, one hand. So that's the thing that I'd like to add it to my life that uh, how to work as one thing. We have to live together and to work together, to be together. Before, I mean, I didn't really believe that we can do it. But now, there are chances for peace, I think so. Because everyone wants peace. If there's something that I will come back with him to home, it's that I believe that it can be. After all, we, want, we all want the same. Peace, it is possible. I have personally seen on ships the worst of enemies become the best of friends. The important thing, the Israeli Palestinians together. I'm gonna say it out loud back home. So each of you put a hand on the line and start hoisting as one. One. one.